OK. Um, welcome to day two of Data Driven. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about pith governance. So this talk really has two different parts. The first part is um, me telling you about you know, how governance works. So this is talking a little bit about the mechanisms and the technology that underpins pith governance. Um, and then the second part of the talk is kind of getting into the more social layer of governance. So, you know, the technical side of governance is implemented and it's live today, but the social side, I think we still need to figure out as kind of the community of PITH token holders. So um, I want to make some suggestions for how we set that up. And I think getting the social side of governance right is really important because, you know, at Dura Labs, we've gone through governance processes for different protocols. And like, I can tell you from that experience that they have dramatically different levels of effectiveness. So I think it's really important for, you know, the PITH community to get together and try to set up a really effective social governance process that kind of uses those technical mechanisms. Um, but before I get into kind of the more opinion part of the talk, um, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, how PETH governance works and what it can do. So the background for this talk is that, you know, PITH's decentralized mainnet is live, decentralized governance is live today. And that means that PITH token holders control the future of the protocol. So this is a major step, you know, in any protocol's evolution, and it's a major step, you know, in the decentralization journey for PIP. So this is really exciting. It's really cool to have this decentralized governance. Um, and the way that you can participate in decentralized governance is uh, you have to stake your PIP tokens. So I'll tell you a little bit about how to do that first. So currently there's a program on Solana called the staking program where anybody with PIP tokens can go and stake, um, stake their tokens to get voting power in PIP governments. So the, the PIP Data Association runs a website at staking.pip.network that you can visit that will allow you to stake your tokens in this program. Um, there's also like a programmatic SDK if you wanna prefer to do that. But basically you can go to this website. Um, I've shown you a screenshot of that website here. You can come to the stake tab, put in your number of tokens, hit stake, send a transaction, and that will stake your tokens and get you voting power. Now, one thing I have to explain about the staking program is that staking runs in epochs. Each epoch is one week and it starts on Thursday at midnight UTC. So, you know, this Thursday, like tomorrow to next Thursday will be one epoch, etc. And if you stake your tokens in the program, they become active uh, to vote at the beginning of the next epoch. So if I staked my tokens today, they would have power to vote tomorrow. Similarly, if you unstake your tokens to withdraw them, then you have to wait for one full epoch before you can withdraw them. So that means if I unstake my tokens today, I have to wait for the beginning of the next epoch, which is Thursday, then I have to wait one more week, so the beginning of the next epoch, which is next Thursday, before I can withdraw them. So it would take me about eight days if I withdraw my tokens today, or try to withdraw my tokens today. Um, so that's kind of how staking works for epochs. Basically, the only the only limit limit of stake tokens is that they're locked up for that one full epoch uh, withdrawal period. So um, it's it's a pretty mild mild condition for using your tokens. Um, so I encourage anyone with tokens to come and stake them here so they can participate in governance. One thing I do want to mention is that um, some community members have locked tokens. You may have received these if you're a data provider and you know you have a grant from the association or something like that. Um, if you have locked tokens, you can participate in governance, but you have to stake your locked tokens. So you can do that on this uh, same web page. All you have to do is click this locked uh, thing here. I know it doesn't look like a button, but if you click it, a modal will pop up and it'll have a button that you can click to stake all your locked tokens. There's really very little downside to staking your lock tokens. You know, the lock tokens are already locked until a future date. So there's really very little downside and this lets you participate in governance. So I highly encourage everybody to do this. Now, once you've staked your tokens, you're eligible to uh, participate in governance, which is governance for PIT is an SPL governance you know, um, DAO. And there are many different UIs that you can use to access SPL governance DAOs. Like SPL governance is the most popular um, governance suite on Solana. So all the major DAOs on Solana use SPL governance and you know, PIT is no different. So there's many different UIs that you can use to access um, SPL governance. 
I've shown you one here, which is called realms.today, which is popular. So with SPL governance, um, the way the DAO will work is that it's a token voting mechanism. So everybody who's staked their PITS tokens basically gets one vote per token. And if you have a sufficient amount of voting power, you can come to this realms.today website and you can make a proposal. So there's some minimum number of um, tokens you have to have in order to make a proposal. And if you make a proposal, you basically write some text saying, this is you know, what the proposal does. And then you can attach to that proposal executable instructions that will run if the proposal passes. So what this means is that um, PIP governance proposals are binding on chain, right? When they are passed, they will actually do the actions that they propose. Now, um, so once you make a proposal, other people can see the proposal, they can comment on the proposal, you can have discussions, um, and they can also vote for or against the proposal. Uh, proposals run, I think, for some period of time, I think it's a week, and basically at the end of that week, if, um, if more people have said yes than no, and also a certain minimum number of people had said yes, like a quorum number, then the proposal passes and those associated instructions will get executed. So this is kind of how PIP governance works. And you might ask, what are the things that you can actually do with governance proposals? So PIP governance has uh, several powers. PIP governance actually controls everything about the PIP protocol. So you know, this is maybe a subset of the powers, but these are the ones that I would expect PIP governance to actually use on any reasonable frequency. So PIP governance um, has a couple of powers. So the first one is it can upgrade the software. So any of the software that powers the PIP protocol running on Solana or other blockchains um, can be upgraded by passing a governance proposal. The second one is it can create price feeds. So the set of price feeds that you know, PIP publishes prices for is controlled by governance. If you want to add price feeds, you have to pass governance proposals. It can also permission publishers. So the set of data providers, you know, PIP has over 80 data providers right now. And that set of data providers is basically controlled by governance. And finally, it can also control fees that are paid on target chain contracts. So some of the contracts for PIP live on other blockchains and they have configuration parameters and governance basically controls all those configuration parameters. So governance has the ability to change those configuration parameters if it chooses to. Now, the, uh, the next, so one question you might ask here is how does governance control um, all of these contracts. Like PIT is a cross-chain protocol. Many of the contracts live on chains that are not Solana. So how does governance actually work? Like how, how does governance control all these different things? And the answer to that question is that PIT governance is connected to wormhole. And that's how it communicates with uh, the PIT contracts on other blockchains. So for example, you know, PIT has a contract deployed on Ethereum, which allows people to verify PIT prices on Ethereum. And that contract basically listens for wormhole messages from PIP governance on Solana. So if you or if you wanted to say propose a change to those configuration parameters on Ethereum, what you would do is on Solana, you would create a governance proposal where the uh, instructions in that proposal basically create a wormhole message with a certain payload that the Ethereum contract understands. And if that proposal passes, what will happen is that message will get sent through wormhole and then the Ethereum contract, anybody can relay that message into the Ethereum contract to change the parameters. So that's how governance works. And one of the reasons I bring this up is because I wanna emphasize that PIT governance really controls every aspect of the PIT protocol, whether it is on Solana or other chains. So uh, PIT governance is really everything.